Hi, my name is Pat Kuhn, Field Technical Consultant for Ivacar Vivident. I'd like to welcome you to our innovation tour. Today, we want to talk about the iVotion Digital Denture Workflows. We're going to start off talking about the three clinical workflows that are most common to your, your dentists out there. The materials that we're going to be using, specifically the iVotion Monolithic Denture Disc. I'm going to have a demo using slides and actual demonstration of the design process. I'm going to demo the nesting process using the program mill cam software. We're going to have a video of the program mill PM7 milling. And finally, we're going to do some a little bit of post-processing or finishing of the denture base. Let's first talk about the three clinical workflows. The three that are going to be most common or that you will see coming into the laboratory most often are going to be um, a mixture of the analog and digital. Uh, probably the traditional wax bite rim, the impressions and bite in a reference denture, and immediate dentures. These are going to be the three most common ones. First, let's talk about the traditional wax, wax rim bite registration. All these procedures up to the wax rim bite registration are completed using the traditional materials and techniques that are really, really familiar to the technician. We're going to have poured up stone model, master models. We're going to hand make um, or maybe a combination of digitally printing the bases and creating a wax rim on top of them. Uh, but basically, we are going to have traditional wax bite rims. These are great because the, the doctors are already used to giving us information on, their, on here. Labial position is already registered if they have adjusted that bite rim. Centric occlusion is already captured with that bite registration. The vertical dimension is captured. The occlusal plane or the incisal length is, is there by, by the edge of this rim. The midline is hopefully marked, along with cuspid lines and high lip lines should be marked as well. And then, of course, the occlusal plane is already set for us. So the doctor is going to have his traditional wax rims and casts, and he's going to send these to you. You're going to use your lab scanner to scan in those dentures and, that, and those wax rims. You're going to have your virtual casts and mounting from that scanning process. You're going to come in and use that nice flat edge of that bite rim as your as your actual occlusal plane template. We're going to design a denture using the wax rim as a reference because we can ghost that in and out to see that we're setting our teeth in the proper positions according to that wax rim. We're going to output some resin try dentures, whether these are printed or milled. And then finally, some final dentures after we make any adjustments we need to make from the try-ins. The second workflow that's going to, that the doctor is going to want to use are impressions and, and bite in a reference denture. Um, a lot of times, uh, if they have a, a trios chair side, they can use the ac patient's actual dentures, do, do take the impressions and the bite in those, scan them with their trios and send you those scan files, or they can make a duplicate denture and take the impressions and bite with those and send you those actual duplicate dentures with the bites to scan. These are great, again, because they do have a lot of good information on them. Even if this denture does not fit or does not give the lip support that we want, at least it does start with the labial position. It gives us a good centric occlusion with that new bite registration, good VDO with that new bite registration. We have something of an indication with the incisal length, hopefully a good midline between eight and nine. And of course, the occlusal plane is already set with those teeth. Now, of course, if any of these things need to be changed, the doctor should make note of it. We're using something similar to this chart on the right. He can tell you that the midline needs no changed, or he has marked it different on the denture, um, or to refer to the comments uh, section. 
Um, same with maxillary incisal length, lip support, bipupillary plane, campers plane, and the bite. So all of these, all of this information just should be sent to you along with these reference dentures. So then we are going to go ahead and do the impressions and bite in the reference dentures. You should be get, being sent that. You are going to use our lab scanner to scan that in, or if the doctor did the TRIOS chair side and you're going to load in those scan files. We're gonna create our virtual casts and mountings, set up our occlusal plane to the template of the teeth, design our new denture using the existing denture as a reference matrix, and make our resin try-in either by printing or milling, or possibly go straight to a final denture if we're very happy with the look of the existing denture. The last workflow we wanna look at this, today is going to be the immediate dentures. Um, this is just going to be pre-extraction impressions for immediate dentures completed using the traditional materials and techniques that are really familiar to the clinician. Um, or you also have the option of intraoral scanning. So here we have the pre-extraction clinical evaluation. Pictures are always fantastic when we can get them. So here we want to again have the doctor note whether the midline is good and needs no change, um, or of course you can't mark it on the denture here, but he can add some comments and say, say that we'd like to move the midline two millimeters to the left or so forth. Of course, any changes or anything to the maxillary incisal length, the lip support, bipupillary plane, campers plane, um, or the bite registration, whether we need to open anything up or like that or not. That should all be noted with your casts and bite registration or with your intraoral scans that you receive from the doctor. We're going to start off with a standard cast and a bite registration. We are going to use our lab scanner again to scan those in. Create our virtual casts and virtual mounting. We'll do our cast surgery to modify, extract the teeth and modify the ridges uh, for the after those extractions. We can design a denture using the extracted teeth as a matrix because we can easily bring these teeth in and out or ghost them in and out to be able to set that up and, and use them as a matrix. And then we can output for a final denture and a surgical reduction guides. So those are the three workflows. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the materials that we're gonna use. We have our traditional digital denture materials that have been on the market for several years now. We have our iVotion Dent and iVotion Dent Multi-Discs. These are denture teeth, these are for denture teeth and tooth segments. Um, they are a double cross-linked material, just like our blue line denture teeth or, or our Vivident SDCL teeth. We have our iVotion base. This is the exact same high impact material that comes out of the uh, iVobase denture system. We have a ProArt CAD try-in for milling try-ins. And we had a ProArt CAD transfer in case we want to go to, the, to using a actual carded denture tooth. But now it's time for something new. We're talking about iVotion the actual monolithic denture. This is a one disc, one design, one milling, and get one denture. It really streamlines your workflow and is a true monolithic powerhouse. This is the first digitally data-based designed disc. They went and took and scanned in many, many, many dentures, existing dentures that they had, and fit them to a geometry and found that they could actually have a common set of data 
to fit these denture teeth into. So this gave us this unique shell geometry disc. Inside these discs for both the upper and the lower, because there are two different discs, because the geometry for upper teeth and lower teeth is a little bit different, we have a tooth shade that has this shell geometry inside of it. Uh, we call it shell geometry because it reminds us of a, of a scallop shell. But the teeth fit right into these and along with the denture base geometry here as well. So that when we are in the CAD design, we have this Ivotion ribbon, this blue ribbon that goes around um, that actually shows us where those ridges and those and those valleys are in the geometry of that disc, and that's where the teeth will be set. We have a special Ivotion tooth library. It is based upon the Phanaris II tooth libraries, uh, but you have 18 normal 22 degree bilateral balanced tooth setups and 18 lingualized tooth setups. So plenty of choices for creating that individualized denture. Manufacturing system compatibility. Um, this is made especially for the program mill PM sevens five and three. Um, they have the on the top pink part. You will see there's these flat areas that fit into a flat ring holder for the for the disc holder for the PM seven. But we did make it backward compatible to the Xenotech Select with Changer. Um, it's a little different process, uh, but if you've got a Xenotech Select Changer with a Changer and you want to be able to do the iVotion denture, you can. No matter which of the mills you're using, whether it's the Xenotech Select or the PM7, 3, or 5, we will you would need to use our ProgrammIL CAM software, and I suggest updating to the latest version, the 4.2.14.0, because uh, that's got the most up-to-date features. But you will need this no matter which of the two milling systems you're using. And people ask me how strong these really are, so let's take a, let's take a look at the strength. This is an IVO-based denture with carded teeth in our Ingstrom machine. And you will see it's gonna go through and it's going to break here. And when it did, it took 257 Newtons of force to actually break that denture. And you can see where it broke, is it broke in the inner proximal of two of the carded teeth, because that's always gonna be the weakest spot on your, on your denture, on your, on your traditional analog denture. This is a just a weak area, um, and this is the the Ivo base high impact denture base material. This is a temporary PMMA material. It is monolithic, and you will see the big difference just because it's monolithic, going from 257 newtons up to 741 newtons of force, and it broke somewhere completely different. This one actually broke in the tooth itself, and it broke where it was connected to the, to the machine. So it's a much different breakage, a much higher force to break these. And that's just a temporary material. When we go to our Ivotion denture, and we do this, and we go through and we will see it took 799 newtons of force to actually break this denture. And you can see it broke in the same area that that temporary did. And that's because both of these dentures, the temporary material and the Ivotion denture are both monolithic. So the, just having the monolithic denture will really strengthen the dentures up. So as you, again, as you can see the differences, 257 for the Ivo base high impact material with carded denture teeth, 741 newtons for the temporary PMMA material, and 799 newtons of force for the Ivotion denture base or denture disc. So now let's have our demo of the, of the denture design. 
First, we're gonna set up the order form because this is important with the iVotion system that we get the order form set up correctly. The first thing we're gonna do is, after you fill in all of your patient information, of course, is we're gonna highlight from second molar to second molar on both the upper and lower arches. And we're going to come over and we are going to select the denture gingiva. We're gonna hover over the plus symbol to open the material options. And then we're going to choose the Ivoclar Ivotion from the drop down menu for the material. Once we have that selected, we're going to go to the top. We're going to choose the anatomy and then artificial tooth, which is the last option here on the right. We're going to hover over the plus symbol again. We're going to choose Ivoclar Ivotion from the drop down menu for material. And then we're gonna bridge the teeth because even though this is a monolithic denture, the software still sees it as a, as a two-piece denture with a tooth arch and a, a denture base until the very final step of the process. So now we're gonna go up to scan settings. We are gonna change the object type from model, make sure it is set on impressions because we're gonna be scanning impressions in this uh, uh, reference denture with impressions inside them. Then once we choose impressions, we're going to make sure that the tray system is selected as two single trays. And then the software should be set up as, or the order form should be set up like this. Uh, we should have the anatomy set up, should have the denture tooth, artificial tooth selected at the end of, of that list here on the far right. The material should be set up as Ivacar Ivotion. Teeth should be bridged. And then the gingiva should, see, should be set up as the denture gingiva at the very beginning here, this first one on the left. And then again, the material again set up as Ivacar Ivotion. Once you have all that set up, we're going to go down to the bottom. And depending on your workflow in your laboratory, we are going to either select to scan or OK um, if you have somebody else doing the scanning that is setting up the order forms. OK, so now let's look at the design of the denture. And here we are. Uh, first of all, the first thing we need to do is we need to set our occlusal plane right here. And we're going to come down to the lower left corner and we're going to select the set with points option. Once we've got that selected, we're going to come over and we're going to place our first point on the cusp tip of the first molar. Our second point at the on the incisal edge at the midline. And our third point or last point on, again on the cusp tip of the first molar across the arch. And that's going to give us our occlusal plane setup. Once we have that, I'm going to use the slider up on the top right. I'm going to remove the lower model and then I am going to look at the upper model from the occlusal plane and just move this disc for the for setting up the uh, with the silhouette on it to get it so that it is nest it is in the correct position over the over the upper arch and I know that because of a couple of different things the first one is I'm going to try to nestle the inside of a pillar here right between that lingual embrasure on eight and nine. Then I'm going to look to see that my midline is lined up with the midline that was marked on the reference denture, uh, whether that is the actual midline between eight and nine, as in this one, or if it's on a line that the doctor had marked. Once I have that occlusal plane set up, we're going to move on to setting, doing our the rest of our model analysis, and we're going to do our characteristic points next. And over here on the left side 
it's always going to tell you here by this green arrow what it wants you to mark first. So first it wants us to mark tuberosity number one. So we're gonna come mark tuberosity number one. Then the next thing is they mark the middle of the size of papilla. Tuberosity number two. Canine point number one. Now it doesn't matter, this you should matter which side you put canine point number one on. It should always be on the same side that you marked as tuberosity number one. And canine point number two, same side as tuberosity number two. Then it's gonna move us to the lower and we're gonna mark the center of the retromolar pad number one. Don't worry about the anterior, posterior, or buccal lingual point that it's centered perfectly. What we really wanna make sure is that it's following this long part of this ridge and that we have it marked there. Then we're gonna mark the buckle of the retromolar pad number one, the lingual of the retromolar pad number one, the center point of the ridge, mark center of the retromolar pad number two, buckle of retromolar pad number two, lingual of retromolar pad number two, canine point number one, canine point number two. And that's the last we have to do for the characteristic points. Next, we're going to uh, we're going to put, click next, and we're going to go to the upper jaw boundary, and we are going to select the draw outline tool, and that is going to give us a little pencil tool here, and we're just going to go along and mark dots along the periphery or where we want the border of our denture to to be. And it's just going to follow along all the way around until we meet up to the first point that we marked and click on it again. And that is going to give us our denture base borders. Then we're going to do the same. We're going to click on the lower jaw boundary box and we're going to do the same here. We're going to select the, the draw outline tool and start marking points around the model until we completely outline the lower where we want it. We're going to go ahead and click next. That's going to bring us to the survey and block out stage. Um, I like to think of this as if I am actually putting this on a an analog survey table and surveyor. Um, the, the cast is on the survey table. The This blue rod right here is actually the analyzing rod on our surveyor. And we're looking at the undercuts that we have at a, at a zero degree tilt. Well, I like to look at it from the occlusal surface. And again, it's just as if I am looking down on that survey table and kind of moving it around until I can get that tilt and see the majority of the undercut up here. And this undercut, it, you can see by view of the scale over here on the right, how much undercut we have. But I just wanna kind of get rid of all of this because this can make a difference in the design of our denture base. Um, it will actually alter the shape. The software will look at it and say, I can't get a milling tool in there to mill that out properly. So I'm going to alter the the inside of that denture base so that I can get a tool in there. And we'll see that a little bit later on when we're doing our, our demo of actually and get to the point where we are actually proposing the denture base. We'll see that. So I am just going to come over here to the left hand side after I get this set where I can see the majority of that undercut and I'm going to select set from view. And now that undercut has been minimized out. I'm going to hit, go ahead and click next and we're going to get to the wax trimming mode. And in here, I am just going to use the smooth, the wax knife smooth tool. And I'm going to come in and 
go over these rugae with that and just fill in the deep areas underneath the rugae. The reason I like this tool is because it just smooths in the deep areas. It doesn't put anything on the high points. If I were to use the wax knife additive tool, the plus symbol over here on the left, that would actually put wax everywhere, the high points, the low points everywhere. So the smooth tool is really a good, good tool for doing this. And then we're going to do the same as on the lower, for the lower model. We're going to put it on the survey table. We're going to look at it from the occlusal and do the set from view. We're going to go through and use the smooth tool to fill in, in any areas that may be, may cause sharp areas on the bottom of the denture or on the intaglio surface of the denture. And now we'll click next and we'll actually be into the setting of the teeth. Now I get to come in and choose my teeth. And since we are doing Ivotion, I want to come down here to the bottom, right at the bottom left here, where it says provider. And I am going to choose my Ivotion library. I'm also going to untick these check boxes. and make sure I tick the show full arch libraries only. And then I get a chance to come in and choose my iVotion tooth library. Um, so I can come in and choose the teeth I want. Uh, I am going to choose for this one, the B81s. I want the bold teeth and I want them to have the, the, the mature appearance. There we go, you can see the teeth populate there. And these are based on the Fenaris two libraries with some tweaks made to the, um, the necks of the teeth and, and, and the sizes just a little bit to help them match the Ivotion ribbon uh, very well, which we'll show it in just a moment. As soon as I get the teeth chosen that I want, I can come over here and choose apply. So here I've chosen the B81 ortho tip teeth. This is a 22 degree bilateral balanced cross tooth cross arch type of occlusal scheme. Um, I could, if I wanted to, choose in this occlusal scheme box right here where it says ortho tip. I could come over here to the arrows. I could change that to ortho lingual and then choose my B81 lingualized setup and hit apply and I could have a lingualized setup if I would like using the iVotion libraries. And you'll see those teeth pop out and now you'll have see the lingualized setup. So either one works fine. Um, I do like the ortho tip setups better now in the um, in the digital world, I think I get a very good setup that is useful for just about all patients with all arch type, all arches um, in a class one type setup because it just we can grind these things in so nicely now that they it comes out really really nice and very well very stable for the patient. All right, so now you've also see something different that you're not used to seeing probably in a in a denture setup in three shape. Um, you see this blue ribbon, I call the Ivotion ribbon. These ribbons, both the upper and the lower ones, these match the geometry that is built into the Ivotion disc both the upper and lower Ivotion discs. They are different because the geometry of the teeth is different. Um, but yeah, this matches that geometry between the pink and the white in the denture base or in that denture disc. So everywhere these little peaks are, these should be coming up in the interproximals between your teeth because that is where the papilla areas are in that Ivotion disc. 
So as you look at this, everything, let's just get rid of the lower at the moment, just so we can concentrate on the upper, but everything occlusal to this ribbon is going to be in the tooth shade. So if you chose an A1 preference disc, everything occlusal to this ribbon is gonna be A1, and everything gingival to that ribbon is going to be preference shaded. So this is how we get that nice design to come out looking like a real denture and not have a straight line between the two. I've also got two sets of handles here while I am in the global tool or the occlusal plane setup tool. I got two sets of handles. I've got the large handles, which are normal, which, which makes everything work together, both the ribbon and the teeth. Blue one as well. Everything works together. And I've got the small sets of handles both red and blue, and these help me manipulate that ribbon. So after I set the teeth, I can come through and manipulate this ribbon and kind of get it placed back where it needs to be. This is also what sets up your nesting in the CAM software, because this information is directly transferred in the CAM5 file format to your CAM software, to the ProgramML CAM software. That way it knows exactly where to place this denture in that disk to get the look that you have on the screen. You can also see there is a blue line down here or a blue disk down here and a blue disk at the top. These are the tops and bottoms of the disc. So I can also see if I were to adjust this enough that I brought that ribbon way up there, I can now see these anterior teeth are not gonna be inside the disc. So they will not get milled at all. I can also, I'm gonna remove the lower arch, look at it from the occlusal, and I can see, again, this blue disc out here, that is the possible milling area of the disc, everything that's, that's, the, that's the limit of it. So I can also look at it from the top and see if there's a possibility that my peripheral rolls are poking outside of those areas here, which this one is absolutely fine, but I could see if maybe um, I was going to have an issue with the denture base fitting within that 98 and a half millimeter disc size. This one's going to be absolutely fine though. If it was going to be poking out of that 98 and a half millimeter disc size, this might be a time when I would think about maybe going to either a the two-piece oversized milling process where I'm using a separate denture tooth and denture base because I do have a little bit more usable space in that disc um, for the 98 and a half millimeters. Um, I also uh, might consider at this point um, uh, printing the base um, out of a flexible material and investing my dentures. Um, that way I could still fit that great big disc or that great big arch of, of the denture base um, into, a, into a denture. So it is something I think about as well. But this one is going to fit just fine. So I'm gonna bring back my lower arch teeth, my lower cast, and I'm gonna do my setup very quickly here. I'm gonna actually remove my, I'm not gonna even think about the disc at the moment. Um, I am gonna get the teeth where I need to and then make sure that my denture base or my ribbon is manipulated correctly. So actually this setup came in pretty good. If I needed to, I could come in 
using my design tools, um, move this where I need to. So let's bring in our denture, kind of ghost it in. And I can see I am right where I need to be on the anterior because my teeth are just starting protrude, to protrude through there. I may need to upright those anterior teeth just a little bit. So I am going to go to my third tool over here, which is my arch setup. And I am going to click on some of my anterior teeth. I'm going to grab the big red rotate handle up here, and I'm going to upright those just a hair. And I'm going to do the same on the bottom, but I'm going to actually tilt them back just a hair. There we go. I might actually tilt them back just a hair from here. There. So I get a little bit closer to the design that the patient had. Okay, now that I got my anteriors pretty much where I want them, I am going to remove my upper teeth and my upper cast and my wax rim again. I am going to look at this from the occlusal surface. And still in this manual arrangement tool here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just swing my arches out so that I am within this green line, which is the lingual aspect of Pound's triangle on both sides. This also helps to get my central sulcus right over the crest of the ridge there, which looks very nice at the moment for me. Okay. Again, I'll bring the upper back in. Bring my, oh, that looks, that's looking very, very good. I am happy with that. Um, so now I've got basically everything where I want. Now is where I could come in and do a little bit of characterization. So I could come in and go to my, my manual arrangement, or my individual setup, excuse me, tool. And then I've got all the options I want to come in and rotate teeth. And you can see if I bring up the ribbon, I can rotate those teeth. I can move them forward or back as I need to. And still keep them within that ribbon. So I still have a good gingival architecture there, even though I have rotated those teeth. And I can do the same all the way around with these. I'm going to undo those because I'm not going to do a lot of rotation on this. There we go. I'm also going to look because it looks like I have got too many teeth in this arch. Um, I could probably get away with what I've got, um, but this red line, where this dark green line, which is the crest of the ridge is, this will actually turn red back here where it starts to go 22 and a half degrees up the ascending ramus. And I really don't want any occlusion back there past that line because at that point, the slope of the ramus is actually working against me with keeping that denture in because now any occlusion I have back here is pushing down. It's acting like a slide on the playground and it's trying to slide that denture down that ramus. 
So that side looks okay, actually. But when I come over here to the patient's left side, I am actually just past that. So what I would like to do is remove the second molars on this side. I'll keep them on the other side, but I'm just gonna right click on here and I'm going to remove this second molar. And I'm gonna right click on the one above it and I'm gonna remove this second molar. I could also, if I wanted to, if I wanted to remove them all, I could right click and I could remove all second molars. That would remove all four. Now, removing a second molar isn't always my first choice in when I'm creating a denture. Sometimes I want to remove a second premolar. That's usually my first choice. Now, I've, while that option is here, remove all second premolars, because I'm using that Ivotion disk, when I do that, that moves everything forward. So now this first molar is in a second premolar um, spot, and it has got a peak from that geometry, that disk coming up through that molar. So that doesn't work for me. I, it just is not make sense in the Ivotion workflow, if you're gonna do the monolithic disk, to do this. So I always remove the second molars when I'm gonna remove teeth, when I'm doing an Ivotion monolithic denture. Um, if I really want to remove the second premolar instead, then I'm going to change my workflow and not do the Ivotion monolithic, but I'm going to do a two-piece oversized milling process, and that way I have that option if I need to. Okay, so now I got my setup pretty much the way I want it. Now it's time to actually look at how my ribbon is set, and what you'll notice is that here in the posterior where I removed that second molar back here, now I have got this area where the tuberosity or the cast is actually sticking through that ribbon. That means anything above this, anything above that blue ribbon, remember, or occlusal of that blue ribbon is going to be A1 tooth shaded. So I need to go back to my occlusal plane adjustment. So I get my handles for the ribbon and I'm going to come in and I am going to adjust that ribbon. Wrong tool, Pat. I'm going to adjust that ribbon so that it no longer protrudes through there and gives me some space. And because I did that tilt on it, I wanna go back and I wanna make sure that my papillas are back where they need to be. Well, now they've slightly moved forward because of that rotation. So I'm just gonna grab the bodily movement and pull those back a little bit. Now they're back here in the posterior where they need to be. Look at the anterior. They look fine across the anterior. We'll look at the patient's right side. Those look fine as well. If I needed to, I could remove my lower arch again. And I can again look to see if I need to move it left or right a little bit to get it to fit. If I need to rotate it just a little bit. to get it to fit better. Again, just wanting to make sure that these nice little peaks are in the inner proximals because that is where that is gonna be on the disc. There we go. Once I've got that set the way I want, I'm going to look at the lower in the same way. Okay. 
and that one looks fine to me. No need to change that at all. All right, so once I've got the teeth set where I want them, I've got the ribbons set where I need them to be. I am ready to move forward. So I'm going to hit next. And wait for my calculations. I'm going to get my gingival line violation warning, meaning that it's looking like it's less than two millimeters thick in some areas. Um, but I'm going to have, this is going to be a monolithic denture, so I don't need to worry about this because even where it's going to be less than two millimeters uh, I, uh, for the denture base, I am going to have 10 millimeters of tooth structure over top of it. So it's definitely going to make it. Um, past that two millimeters of, of area. All right, so now I get to choose my gingiva aesthetics. Uh, I am gonna set my denture base thickness at two and a half millimeters for the upper. I am gonna come in and I am going to change my gingiva aesthetics. I got the delicate, I got the natural, and I've got the intense. I like the intense but I do like to back it off a couple ticks on the root eminence thickness and root eminence height. Just makes it a little bit nicer for me. You will notice that the interdental papilla length and interdental papilla width are grayed out. Those are not able to be adjusted because you have this ribbon. Again, that ribbon is going to dictate your papillas. Um, so there is no way to increase or decrease the width of those or the length of those papillas. Once I get that, make sure my drill compensation is checked because I am going to mill this and we will hit next or preview actually, let's preview it. Here is where I was talking about before when we were changing the, the insertion direction of the denture back way back in the block out stage. This is what it'll do to your do to your your denture base so that it thinks it can get that tool in there. Um, we have adjusted it so this should not be an issue. So you just want to click yes you want to continue. There we go. And yes, I did speed up that calculation in the in the video here uh, because I didn't want to sit while it took all that time to calculate. Uh, but you can see how that gingiva is brought in. Um, yes, there are areas that are still poking through with the pink, um, but we'll go through and fix that when we get to the sculpt denture base. But that gives me a very nice intense with those little ticks down gives me a very nice gingiva aesthetics that I can start off and work with. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. We're going to do the same thing for the lower. The lower I am going to choose to make it three millimeters thick. We do that just for strength because we don't have the palette for cross bracing on this. So we are going to just make it a little bit thicker. Again, I'm going to choose the intense. Bring it down a couple ticks. So here we are in the connector stage for the upper. You do have an option to be able to change the scale on these connectors. I do recommend not touching these at all. Um, the reason is that a couple different reasons. Once one, it's a one millimeter tool that's going to go into these interproximals to mill. Um, and changing that scale so that facial scale is deeper um, is not going to make a difference in your milling because that one millimeter tool is still not going to get any deeper into those interproximal areas. Um, the other reason is that when you change these, that can affect the underside of the connector and cause some. Um, uh, defects or or miscalculations in the triangles that shape that area and that can cause some issues when it tries to combine the denture base and the tooth arch together into one piece. So I recommend just leaving these the connector settings as they are. We 
will go ahead and hit next. You'll see those connectors pop up. There they are. We are now in the sculpt anatomy. Um, I am not going to change the anatomy of the teeth here, but I will do my virtual grind in. So if this was opposing a natural dentition or an existing denture, um, first thing I would do is I would come over and I would take and click on my contacts and smoothing icon. That's this one that looks like a little joystick uh, from your Atari 2600. And then I'm gonna come in and hit the play button here to make those contacts for the occlusal centric stops absolutely perfect. But since I am not, I didn't do that, I actually used the, the full arch library setup and I did not change position of my posterior teeth. I don't want to affect that occlusion at all. Um, so I am not going to do this tool, but what I am going to do is come over to the far right and turn on my virtual articulator. And there's my stratus articulator. And you can see right now that setup is not really placed in the articulator where it needs to be. So I am going to turn off the articulator for a second and then adjust the position in the articulator using this occlusal disc. Now this looks like when we set up our occlusal um, uh, occlusion or my occlusal plane at the very beginning, but it is a different tool. It looks the same, but it is a different tool and is only for setting you up in the articulator. Because now when I bring the articulator back, you can see now I'm a little bit closer where I need to be. We'll move that back just a hair more so that that pointer is right. Where it should be an approximal of eight and nine. There we go. After I do that, I can turn off the articulator because I don't need to see it anymore, but it is still active because the control box is still active over here. And I'm going to move from the setup articulator to the use articulator. There we go. Now we're in the use articulator. So now I'm going to go in and I am going to click on the play button to run the articulator through its movements and you will see my contacts come up. Very nice posterior contacts. Um, not quite what I want. I don't have any anterior contacts, which I should, oh, there's a few. So I am going to adapt my settings, adapt designs, and it's going to cut or virtually grind in those excursive movements by a tenth of a millimeter. All right, once it does it, you'll see those move those marks disappear. Then I can run it through my excursive movements again. There we go, getting a little bit better. I'm gonna do one more time to adapt those settings. There we go. And run it through one more time. Usually about three times is enough to get me exactly what I want. And that looks really, really good to me. Good solid working, good solid balancing. Um, it all looks really, really good. Um, if I have to do this adapt designs more than three times, then I'm going to undo all of those and I'm going to go back to Smile Composer and I'm going to adjust the placement of the teeth a little bit. Um, probably my um, 
my camper's plane adjustment just a little bit to get a better movement here and better occlusal scheme. But this looks really good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click the next button. And I'm going to turn off my virtual articulator because I don't need that now. The red that you see poking through, that is areas where I am at or below the two millimeters uh, recommended minimal thickness for this material. Um, if it's not that bad here, it looks like a large red area where I am below it. But if we actually do a 2D cross section of those areas, and I come in, and here is where that is going through. If I make that measurement from this dark red line, which is the minim minimal thickness to this light pink line, I am only a half a millimeter scarce in that area. And that's probably not even that much in most places. You see even back here, uh, almost a millimeter, but it's in one little spot. So that doesn't bother me. Um, if I was doing a regular denture and I had a couple areas that were were less that are down to that millimeter thickness, it still wouldn't bother me because it's plenty of times I do that, as long as it's not the entire denture. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my minimal thickness icon on the slider, and I'm going to bring in my Ivotion ribbon. So now I can see areas, again, remember everything occlusal to this blue ribbon is going to be A1 shaded or two shaded. So there's a few things I need to fix. First things I will do though, is I will come through and just look underneath here and make sure I'm taking advantage of that pink area of that ribbon. So here's an area right here that is not all the way to the ribbon. So I am just gonna use my morph tool and morph that up a little bit. I'm gonna come through and do the same all the way around. I wanna make sure that I'm taking advantage of that geometry. If I've got Papilla to use, why not use it, right? And the reason there are areas like that is that the software is going to do a data average between the thickness that you set up for the denture base and where that ribbon is coming through. And if it can't get it all, it's going to average it out and, uh, and try to make the best of it. So there are always going to be some adjustments. Again, here's a large area that's going to be tooth shaded. So I am going to use, again, the morph tool, but I am going to increase the size of that tool. And I am just going to kind of morph it down a little bit in that area. I'm still yeah, it's again below the minimal thickness there, but a two d cross section will show. That is not that much. Yeah, it's a little thin there. That's okay. If that's a little thin, then I will come in and I will bring it up a little bit. now back to a little over one millimeter. So that's okay. Uh, again, I can leave that. That's in an area that's not going to be a an aesthetic concern. Or once it's milled, I could come in and I could take a burr and I could remove a little bit of that. And then I could use some ProBase Cold uh, in the same preference shade 
and put that on top of this and cure it and then polish that off. And then it would be a nice, it would again be a pink shade for me. So either one of those options does work here. Uh, but I am going to shoot, move over to my wax knife now. I am going to use the remove wax tool. And I am going to come in and just go around. And make sure I don't have any other pink around my teeth because if I do that means that those pillows there are going to be what they're going to be too shaded Another no-no there, having that pink come through the tooth like that, because that will definitely cause an error when we're trying to do our coupling here in a moment. Okay, do the same thing everywhere on the lingual, because the lingual's just as important. There we go. I can also look at the linguals to see if I've got any areas. Oh, look here. Here I've got an area where it is white underneath that gingival, that gingival to the ribbon. And that I know is going to be mean that that area of the tooth there is going to be pink. And I don't want that. So I'm going to come back through and add just a hair. But do that all the way around. Looks good. Once I've got that set the way I want, that looks good for the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and turn my ribbon off. I can come in now and do any adjustments and does and make any characterization to the denture base that I would like. I'm doing the stippling by All right, once I've got the denture base designed the way I want, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. We go to the coupling mechanism. There are some changes you can make here. I do not re recommend doing any of them. Just leave them the way they are. 
and go ahead and hit next. Here we are in the pre-manufacturing stage now. There are not any changes you can make here, although I do want to see that the assembling type has been set as monoblock. That means, yeah, the software knows that we are kind of going to combine the two pieces, the tooth arch and the denture base into one piece to become an iVotion denture. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And once I do that, it will calculate out. And then we will do all the same steps that we did for the upper um, on the lower, except on the sculpt anatomy stage on the lower, we will not do any more adjustments to the occlusion because when we did it on the upper, it set it adjusted both the upper and lower um, teeth to get that proper occlusal scheme. And at the end, and at the end, this is what we should see. We should see the tooth arch and the denture base with this modeled appearance. This means that the software does see it as a monoblock and it is ready to go to our mill. So I am going to go ahead and close. Once my design is completed, I'm going to right click and go to advanced. And if my software did not automatically generate my cam, I would go ahead and click generate cam. Uh, mine has, so that's, I'm all in good shape there. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring up my cam software. And I am using cam version 4.2.14.9. That is our most recent version of the cam. I am going to go to the objects and I am going to do an import and I'm going to go to my program mill software folder, my cam in folder, my most recent folder, which is the innovation tour. And there are my two files, one for the upper. I can tell because it is tooth number two through tooth number 15. It says it's for a bicolored disc and it is a CAM5 zip. And then of course the lower because it's 18 through 30. <clears throat> I'll highlight both of those and go ahead and click open. And that should bring both of them up in the lower right hand corner of my screen here. There they are. You notice that the one next to it has a check mark. That means it's ready to be nested. These two do not have check marks on them. That means they have something that needs to be done to them. Um, this is because I have only got, I have got, or I should say, I have got several mills set up in my system. Um, but uh, so I have to go in and choose which mill I want them to go to. If you only have one PM7 for this um, or one VLAN select, then that will be the only thing that'll pop up and they will already have a green check mark. I would still suggest right clicking them and clicking edit. And because I'm choosing my machine, but I su 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 suggest that you come in 
and right click and click edit and then come in and make sure your strategy is is chosen correctly there are three main strategies here there is a pmm high strategy a pmma fast strategy and a pmma standard strategy high fast and standard the difference between these um, are the fine detail that you're going to get on the denture. The fast is going to give you the fastest milling possible, but you're still going to have a lot of mill marks uh, left on the, on the denture. Uh, this is good if you are doing maybe an immediate where you know that the doctor is going to, <clears throat> where you know that the doctor is going to immediately reline the denture um, chair side. And that just means that you will have to polish the cameo surface or the outside surface of the denture a little bit more before you send it out. The standard is going to give you something that is going to be very acceptable. Uh, we'll just require, again, it's still going to leave some mill marks, but nothing on the intaglio surface that's going to be detrimental to the fit or collecting plaque or anything like that. Um, but the outside will need a little, be a little bit higher polished. And of course, the high standard is which I usually do. Um, this is going to take a little bit longer, about two to two and a half hours to mill, depending on the geometry of the denture. Um, but it's going to give you something that all you have to do is high shine it uh, when it comes out. There's not going to be any other smoothing that needs to be done to it. And will give you a very fine, fine surface on the intaglio. So I'm going to choose my high strategy. And at that point, that's the only thing I can do here. Um, unlike in the regular denture uh, module, I can't go. I can go to object alignment, but I can't do anything with it because the detailed alignment is actually grayed out. That's because all of the information for nesting and its position in the disk was determined by that ribbon in the CAD software and the three shape software. So there's nothing else I can do here. So I am going to go ahead and click close or okay and save and close this and now it is set i'm going to do the same thing with my lower pm7 done the high strategy already i'm going to go ahead and close it they both have green check marks and are ready to go for their disk now so if i double click it again I will bring up my available disks that are the right shade and the right size and the right upper denture. So here's one right here. I will go ahead and double click that. It will populate into my disk automatically. Again, it's already locked as you can see by the maroon icon right there. I can't move it. There is no move option here to move that denture. So all I got to do now is add holding bars. I am going to add one, two, three, four holding bars. I do notice in the slower window that I am going to cross a peripheral roll, so I'm going to right click and delete that holding bar. And I am going to re add that one a little bit lower. That looks better. Okay, once I do that, I got four holding bars on here for this upper. I'm going to come over, I'm going to click off of it, click on it again, and then come over here to the right, and I am going to increase my processing area offset fully, and my conical angle supplement fully, and what that will do is will give me the best millable area or access to the denture to have a, the best milling possible. Um, you will notice that in areas 
where it could extend that all the way out to that four millimeter as a processing area offset and that 10 degree conical angle supplement. It did it out here. On the areas where it's going to be held in place by that digital denture holder ring for the mill, um, it and you can't mill those areas, those are unmillable areas on the disc, it automatically stopped it short there. Or here where it was going to mill outside of the disc, it stopped it short so that we did not have any mistakes. This is a feature of this, this version of the software. Uh, it works very, very nicely. So on most everything, you can increase that processing area offset and conical angle supplement to their maximum. At that point, it is ready to calculate. So we'll calculate that out. While that is calculating, I'll go back to my objects and I will do the same for my lower. Okay, now that this has finally finished its calculation, we can go ahead and send it to the mill. So I am just going to go up to the NC manager. And there it is, ready to go to the mill. All I need to do is click on write the holding file and that will populate in my mill ready to ready to go. And I will repeat the same procedure for the lower. I use a few different items here. This larger cross cut or a smaller, it's your preference. I prefer the smaller to take down the sprue attachments. Uh, this cross cut can also be used in place of this three sided cutter to take it out of the disc if you choose to use something like that. I have a number two round burr for contouring the gingival areas. I have a 10 millimeter double-sided diamond disc. It's a little flexible. This is what I'll use to open up the embrasures. So if we're talking a, a good, better, best denture, uh, coming right out of the mill, obviously the embrasures are not fully opened. If you want to make it a little better, you can just come in here and gently open up those embrasures, and I'll show you how I do that. The others are polishers, and so in the laboratory you have... Uh, what you're most comfortable with, um, polishing uh, instruments. Really no need to go to pumice. You're already beyond the pumice stage here, so really all you need is just polishing devices. So let's go ahead and open up the suction and just take down those little bar attachments. So if you choose to add a little bit more gingival characterization, that's where this little pair burr also comes in handy. So you can come in and contour some of the denture base that maybe you didn't get around to doing in the CAD design. So 
So that's another benefit of having this tool. So I'm multitasking the tool as I go for efficiency. Of course, you can turn your speed up is what you're comfortable with. Around 15,000 RPMs is typically where I work. It doesn't uh, tend to burn the acrylic. So before I go to other polishing, I'm going to open up those embrasures. I'm just going to take this disc and go very slow right in the interproximal area. Just do a nice little cut just to open the embrasure, maybe round that incisal edge off. For the crown and bridge technicians, this is going to be relatively easy for you other than it is PMMA material, so it cuts a lot faster than a ceramic. So you have to take your time, go slow. There's no, no hurry the first couple that you do. And I'll just do the anterior six right now. The smaller disc works a lot better than, say, a large disc like this. This disc, um, even though it's thin, it's nice, you just are not able to get into that interproximal without cutting into your papilla area. So I just leave the large disc for my ceramics. Okay, the next thing I'll follow up with in those areas where I just cut, is this is a stiff Robinson bristle brush. It's about half used. You know, when they're new, they're fairly larger. So I've used this one for a while. I'll go in at lower speed at about five to eight RPMs, just going a little slower because I don't want to burn the acrylic. And that stiff brush does a really nice job rounding off where that sharp disc placed the cut. And while you're in there, you can also do a little polish in the interproximals. Now I won't video polishing the entire denture, so I'll just pick a side and stick on it here to show you how quick and easy this is. I'll take Kind of a medium silicone wheel and I'll touch up those areas that the holder bars were on or that I may have gone in and polished. So this is the closest thing I get to pumice or a rag wheel on a digital denture. Just kind of clean up those areas nicely without burning it. So light pressure, let the tool do the work. Then I'll follow it up with a finer one just to provide a little bit more of a high shine surface on there. Now, Brassler has a couple different polishing wheels that are impregnated with a polishing me median. This is, uh, this brown one's a little coarser, so you can just lightly go over the surface. You can see how fast this is polishing up. Again, I'll just stick here on the patient's left side. Shouldn't have to spend a whole lot of time on the teeth other than opening embrasures. So you can see how that's bringing it up to a lightly polished surface. Same thing on the lingual. We can come into the lingual. So we'll start to see a little bit more of a higher shine come out with the pink. You can see how nice those teeth start to pop. As I go over this surface, if we look and we want to talk about that good, better, best denture again, this is a good denture. If I want to make it a little better, I can always come in with that number two burr. So you can come in and add a little bit more surface texture to this tooth. So we can see how a little bit of surface texture begins to change the light, just as it does on uh, a ceramic tooth or a nice Phenaris or Vivident S DCL or PE tooth that has some really nice anatomy. And it doesn't take long to put that back on there. So real quick, just over it with this pink wheel. Now this wheel is not going to get into the interproximal or completely into the occlusal table. So then we got to switch to another tool. So we'll get the palette polished a little bit here. Again, low speed. I'm always moving, not staying in one place. I will switch to that, either a medium Robinson bristle brush or a soft. I prefer the soft. And I'll come right in and this gets nicely into the interproximals. If you need a polishing compound, 
you know, whatever your favorite uh, bobbing compound is. I, I like the green. Uh, the other bobbing compounds are yellow, that would be that color. Uh, and just come right in and do the final polish in the interproximal area. Inclusal table. You see how quick that polishes up. Polish the rugae that we put in there. Just going over the whole surface lightly. So about 15 minutes of, of polishing, and I, I've, I've done half of it, you know, from taking it out of the disc, contouring it, and of course I'm explaining as I go. So on average, 10 to 15 minutes to complete an arch in, in polishing, depending on the detail you want to apply. So you can see, that's it. I'm going to take it, clean it, after I do this side, of course, put it in the denture box, and it's ready to be delivered to the patient. Thank Bill for his uh, video and showing us how to finish down and complete these digital dentures. I also want to thank you for your time and your attention today. And I believe now we're going to open it up for some questions and answers.